So basically, it's not even white pieces of the chest, but it only serves in tennis. It's a small advantage. Um, the C6 check would have been great because it would have disturbed Black's King. He would have had to have moved it. That would have prevented him from castling. At the moment, um, Black's actually stopped himself from castling on the King side. I didn't see what the threat was there. Maybe he saw something I didn't. But White's developing sensibly. There's no real advantage here, certainly not at this level. Uh, until somebody gets a serious amount of material up, I think this is going to be a very open fight. Certainly, this is going to be all down to the first round of boxing to find out who's actually got the advantage. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, and and um, and especially speaking to um, more of the beginner level of chess, if you're spectating, uh, one of the basic principles of chess is to control the center of the board. So those four center squares where you see white's knight and pawn, um, controlling that can help dictate the pace of the chess match. Now, the first chess round is over. And one par parallel that I love in, uh, from the chessboard to the boxing ring is the same way that you want to control the center of the board, you also want to control the center of the ring. So as you box, it, you, 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 if you control the center, you can almost push your uh, opponent into the corners or up against the rope, limiting their mobility and controlling the pace of the match. So uh, we'll, we'll be going over a lot of the parallels between chess and boxing as the night progresses. But one, uh, one that I love, especially in the, in the beginning, is who takes control and, and, and displays what's called ring generalship as the, the fight starts. Who's going to be the aggressor? Who's going to be controlling space better? And, uh, and we're going to find out in just a few seconds here, um, the, the minute in between rounds coming to a close, the table out of the center of the ring, the board uh, also out, and, uh, and the gloves are on. So ladies and gentlemen, our first boxing round of the Nordic chess boxing fights are about to be underway. The ref has brought the fighters to the center of the ring. Uh, he's giving them the, the, the rules. Look to him. Otto, Otto is the guy with the tattoos because controversially they're both wearing red shorts. So just in case you're watching from home, Otto, guy with a big tattoo across his back and chest and Martin from the Netherlands fighting uh, with no tattoos that I can see. And, and Matt Reed makes a great point. Uh, so actually instead of red and blue like boxing, they're actually black and white corner. So in the white corner, which would typically be red, uh, is Martin Kammerling, who does a nice check hook and pivots out, controlling the center of that ring. Now, Otto, uh, really busy with that lead hand. He's feigning uh, jabs just to see what kind of reactions Martin has. Um, Martin, really successful early on, landing two of the hooks. 
and blocking most of the shots, although one stray cross sneaks through for Otto. Otto has uh, uh, notoriously in Finland won his first match by a devastating knockout, and, uh, and Martin's been watching that over and over again, trying to learn the movement, making sure that doesn't happen to him. That two keeps sneaking through the center of the guard. Matt, what are you seeing? I'm seeing high energy here. I mean, there, there are six chess rounds of three minutes. There are five boxing rounds. This is an awful lot of boxing at this pace for them to keep it up. So I'm very impressed by the energy levels. The training's obviously been intensive. Um, they, they don't look as though they're, they're taking this lightly. And uh, at the moment, very hard to pick it out. I'd say that uh, Martin's probably had the cleaner work, but Otto looks a little bit busier and he's throwing four more punches. Absolutely. We see a wrap up. The ref is going to come in, separate, move them to neutral corners and, uh, and just continue the fight. Now, one thing I'm noticing with Otto, uh, which is typical of newer fighters, is when he throws that jab, he lowers his right hand. And Martin seemed to find uh, that he wasn't bringing his guard back after he threw a punch, landed a nice counter right there. So look for uh, when, when you attack, you always open yourself up. That's in chess and in boxing. So when, when you open up to throw a punch, there's a hole that is created. And Martin found that hole in that last counter, threw a big shot, missed. Otto, Otto slipped it. And, uh, and came right back down the middle, slipping through the guard again. It looks like Martin has been stunned, wraps up smartly to regain his composure and continue the fight. Ref lets them uh, grapple it out. Looks like they, they clenched again. Ref is separating them and will continue. Martin back against the ropes. Let's see if he pivots, circles. We're getting close to the end of this boxing round. See who will win the last few seconds and who will uh, manage their, their state better as they transition back to chess. Nice searching jabs. Ooh, great cross. Lands right on the temple of Otto Martin. I, I think landing the majority of the clean punches this round. So there's the bell. Uh, I would give a, a slight advantage to Martin in that round. What did you see, Matt? I see that as a 10-9 to Martin. I think one of those dangerous, but I think, we, as we heard from Matt earlier, the guard, you have to keep it up. You throw your punches, you return to guard. You always have to reset, otherwise it's just the number of cheap shots that you'll just have to take. So now, what you have to do is you have to lower your heart rate. You have to forget about the boxing. If you go into your chest round now, thinking about the last big punch that you took or the punishment that you'll have to take in the next round, you'll be in for a very short chest round. You have to keep on concentrating on what's going on at the board. So deep breaths, those who practice yoga, are very good at basically being able to take themselves out of the moment and reset because you, you come out of the boxing with maybe a heart rate of like 130, 140, even if you're very fit. If you can get it down to 70 beats a minute, you've got a very good chance of playing some good chess. Otherwise, you're just going to panic. The, the bright lights and the heat of the lights are going to cause you to make some mistakes. And at this level, maybe it's okay. But certainly as we go on this evening and we start to see the chess players around the 1700 to 1800 mark, then obviously any mistakes there are probably terminal. You don't really want to lose a piece at that level. So uh, I think they're about to take their seats down. And it, as you can see here, White, um, slight advantage on the clock. See, 27 seconds up. He's got a slightly better position in that he's still got a, he's got a safer king. Black king's in the center. The White Knights, the one on B5, the one on E4, they're looking like they can penetrate into D6. Um, I think everything's just like slightly better placed, but the queens are off. So when the queens off, there's slightly less danger in this position. So I very much doubt we're going to see a knockout blow in the chess round. Back over to Matt. Yeah, thanks, Matt Reed. So what we just saw is is the the knight in the middle for White move up and connect with the other knight. So when two knights are combined, uh, they they balance each other out really well. They can move and and, and catch uh, some really nice force. We, there's a blunder right there, like Matt said. So uh, there was a trade-off um, that the bishop traded for the knight, and, and instead of retaking with the knight, uh, he left the knight exposed, which uh, the, the bishop saw that hanging piece and took it. And, and this is something that happens, even though Martin won that last boxing round, 10-9 round, according to uh, you know our judgment, maybe not on the official card, but um, he was still affected with heart rate and, and maybe uh, missed something that he would normally see, uh, which is you know moving his piece out of danger or retaking with, uh, with the correct piece. 
So, um, like like Matt was talking about, the state change in management, the ability to get your heart rate from a 130, 140 back down to a 70 and 80, uh, really helps your, your central nervous system uh, calm down, get out of fight or flight state, and be able to, to return to the pattern recognition and strategic thinking that uh, really helps you on the chessboard. So, uh, when when I compete, I I engage in breath from yoga called samavriti or box breathing. I'll start with four count breaths in, holding and out, and I'll try to extend how much time I exhale each time I, I do it. When, when you exhale, when you, when you inhale, you signal to your central nervous system it's okay to calm down and be safe. Now, Matt, what are you seeing on the chessboard? We've had some developments here. So Black's actually gone and lost a piece, and White is now seriously pushing because. He's got this D7 pawn, it's supported by a bishop, it's supported by a rook. So at the moment, that's like a fishbone stuck in your throat. You're gonna find it very hard to breathe if you're black. There's not a lot of room to maneuver. And as we all know, if that pawn gets to the very end of the board, that becomes a queen. And that's the strongest piece on the board. Oh, now that is not a good move. That knight, they'd move backwards as well as forwards. And wow, Otto has spotted that straight away. No flies on him, but now that the bishop's recaptured that, that, that knight, there, there is an attack on the rook on C7. Um, and there's also an attack on the rook on f8. So that is that is a, that is a fork. Uh, and as long as Martin sees it, then Martin is now two pieces up. So this this is pretty much terminal for uh, for Otto because he doesn't really have a lot of material left to even fight back with. It's kind of like he's already had one arm cut off, one leg cut off, and he's just kind of hobbling around the ring. So um, I think this is now now mainly a question of time. We have some threats here. A rook to e8 check when the king moves b8 will be checkmate so you have to stop that and he hasn't quite um, now the rook uh, the, the rook's come up to e8 the king's only got one move uh, if you oh end of the round he survived now this is this is dangerous for martin i think otto will realize he has no more chance in the chess and there is nothing more dangerous than a chess boxer that has had the chip that has had the chest removed. So realistically, Otto is gonna go hell for leather. He is gonna put the gloves on and he is gonna go for the knockout. So we had some fireworks in the first round, but I expect to see more in round two of the boxing. Yeah, we are about to see an electric boxing round right here. Again, Otto having that knockout power and having very little to no chance on the chess board makes for a, a, a recipe of disaster for Martin. So Martin's um, main strategy in this boxing round uh, should be to stay away, use his reach advantage, throw a lot of jabs, something Matt Reed knows a lot about, uh, staying away and, and working towards the checkmate in the next chess round. Now, he also could employ the strategy of, of thinking that Otto would know he was going to do that and uh, and more counter punching. So um, using that that all out offense against Otto and uh, and being able to beat him at his own game. So we'll see what Martin does here. Uh, but defense is key in any case. A nice hook to the body lands by Otto to start off this this uh, fourth round in the boxing ring. Searching jab hook or a jab cross uh, finds nothing but air. Each getting a sense for each other's timing again. Nice distancing. Left hook lands on the, over the ear for Martin. A right hook lands over the ear for Martin too. A lot of a lot of success with the hooks. So what, what I see here is is Martin is controlling uh, the, the pace of this match so far. Uh, so what what we thought with. Uh, Otto being the aggressor and coming coming forward, Martin is actually controlling the center of the ring and uh, and making his opponent back up in circle. His hands are coming down. Maybe he's baiting shots. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of fatigue too. We're coming up on about a minute through the the, the boxing round. So if uh, if Otto is going to make moves towards a checkmate, I, a checkmate, a knockout, <laughs> they're they're going to have to happen here soon. Um, it, it's, I, I'm actually kind of surprised by his pace right now. He's, he's not throwing many punches. He's trying to get in tight. Martin does have that reach advantage. Uh, and and it, it can be difficult to get in, inside jabs, especially quick ones like jab. Uh, but, but a nice slip on the inside and a counter by Otto before it, hey. All right, so, so can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> okay, so we don't like to see that. That is a blow after the referee has told the fighters to break and to stop fighting. So that nasty little check hook 
that, that would normally get the boost from the crowd, but the finish they are either very reserved or very polite. I'm not sure, but that, that deserved a boo. And Martin is getting his own back now. Oh, nearly turned into chess wrestling. That's a new hybrid sport we're launching next year, but chess boxing is what this is supposed to be. Let's get back to it. Oh, great jab there. And I think as long as Martin can continue to extend that jab and keep his guard up, he doesn't have much longer to have to survive. And also what we see is a noticeable change of pace and mood of Martin. He was angry by that left hook, which uh, can benefit you with, with aggression like we just saw, landing a, a really strong, probably his best left hook of the match so far. Uh, but it, it can also hurt. Uh, you know, if you, if you see red and come out, it, that, that might be part of Otto's plan of, of, you know, a hit after the bell, maybe get a little wrist slap from, from the ref. But, uh, but now Martin's angry and, and letting his guard down. So he might be playing right into Otto's trap here. But time will tell, we, we are low on time. I think we just heard the 30 second uh, uh, little bell right there, ringside. So uh, final seconds of the round, let's see if Otto throws any haymakers uh, or if this will go to the next chess round. Another great right hook lands right on the chin by Martin. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the second boxing round. Back to the chessboard. Uh, the, but both fighters are getting their gloves off, trying to control their breath, control their heart rate. The board is being set back up. And we're coming back to a very precarious p position for black. Uh, so uh, white, white is up uh, two pieces, has a, um, a, a pawn right, right. Okay, so we've just been told by the organizers that a little uh, after, the, uh, after the break blow uh, from Otto has cost him 30 seconds on the chess clock. Now, if I was a chess boxer that was a little bit into gamesmanship, I think I would have accepted a 30 second penalty for that hit because like Matt says, it unbalances you. It, it throws you off. If you've got concentration, all of a sudden you start seeing red and red is not a good color to be seeing in the chess boxing world because you want to be focused. You want to be emotionless almost, driven, and uh, having emotion coming into you, to a fight, it just means that all of that plan goes out of the window. And I think I would have actually thrown that punch after the bell if I'd have known that it was only a 30 second penalty, because they've got so much time on their clocks. I mean, I think I could win this position uh, for White with about 20 seconds on my clock, maybe even less. So you don't need a lot of time, he has minutes. So 30 seconds off is not gonna be a big deal. But as we see here, so Black's now gone down to 524 from 554. But the, the correct move now is for White to exchange off the rooks. When Black recaptures, he would then promote the pawn. Instead, what he's done is he's moved his bishop to allow the queening square to be covered again. But now he's doing it right. They're very good at spotting the, the right move second time round, which is quite, quite amazing. So now we've got the queen. The pawn got to the end, makes a new queen. And as you can see, the Black King does not have many safe squares to go to. The only danger now for Martin is the stalemate. That's where you leave black without any legal moves. But if you can work out that there's some number of pawns that aren't blocked, I don't think the stalemate on is on in this position. So I think it's just a case of a little bit of clear analysis from, uh, from Martin. And I think we should be able to see a checkmate in about two to three moves. I think bishop d6 and it's over. That's it. He found it straight away. Well. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. First chess boxing match from the Nordic chess boxing fights is in the books. Martin Kammerling from the Netherlands, hailing from Amsterdam, comes in and beats the hometown guy, Otto, uh, in the black pieces by checkmate. So uh, really, really great boxing, both rounds. I would say uh, Martin won both of the, the boxing rounds and had the superior position on the chessboard, resulting in a checkmate. So great first match to kick off the night um, and and if you're able to follow the, the chess from this game this is the, uh, the the lowest rated players of the evening so the, the most uh, rudimentary chess it'll get uh, more and more complex as the night goes on um, and we also have a lot of uh, of exciting fighters coming